You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, 300 Rise of an Empire is coming up, and you know what that means? This is Sparta! Wow. No? Okay. <laughs> Actually, it means it's another edition of Don't F with the Original. With Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I'm Dimitri, editor in chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. We will be discussing the movie that started it all, in this case, Zack Snyder's 300. It's funny you say started it all, because it's only the second movie. It's like it started it all. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. It's two movies, but it's 600 Spartans, you know? <laughs> so, 2007, Zack Snyder 300, based on the comic book by Frank Miller, also called 300. What a coincidence. Crazy. Yeah. Take it away, Nick. The Persians are attacking us by Xerxes, and Leonidas wants to protect, you know, his city and his country, so he goes, he wants to, you know, attack them, but the council or the oracle doesn't want them to commit the whole army, so he goes to defend Greece with 300 people. And the whole concept is them fighting uh, the Persian army with only 300 soldiers. Yeah, which is based on, of course, uh, true history. Not quite exactly, but... Um, well, yeah, well, actually, it's based on history. I wouldn't say true history. <laughs> His whole army went there. Yeah. And when uh, events in the movie unfolded, only 300 stayed back, yeah. basically. So it, it's close to what happened. Yeah, and we'll get into some of the inaccuracies and some of the interesting uh, historical facts rela relating to that battle. Because uh, in, in real life, Leonidas actually lucked out a lot in this one uh, in, in, in real life because okay. um, a lot of the ships from the Persians actually crashed before they got there and <laughs> actually probably spared quite a bit of their lives yeah, and, and that like is that. in the movie as well oh that's you know? true it is yeah. so you know pretty cool what did you think of the movie? Um, it looked great that I can say it's a style I've never seen before and I like that you know I'm always looking for something different so looking at the style of the movie it was very spectacular to look at as an action or suspense or a great movie, eh, really, uh, it was it was mindless fighting, really, <laughs> most, most of it for me, but so yeah. it didn't do it for me, but it was very beautiful to look at, I will give it that. No, I agree, um, it, it is kind of one note, which is, uh, and it's a relentless note, and by, by the end of the runtime, you're sort of like, I, I sort of want to see something else at this point, yeah. so I totally get where you're coming from. I don't think it's really an action thriller, I, at least, <laughs> yeah. well, obviously, there's fighting all the time, so there is yeah. action, but... Yeah. I don't think it's structured that way. I don't no. think it's meant to be taken that way. I know. It's just, it, it's for crazy visuals that you would yeah. watch this movie. Like at one point, he's, eat, he's eating an apple and it looks great, okay? So <laughs> it's not all about the fighting, really. It's really about the visuals. Absolutely. Well, the shot where, look, spoiler alert, people, this is history. If you don't know this, then I blame you, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, all the Spartans die. Um, well, not all the Spartans, but all the Spartans that stay there The die. 300. Yeah. yeah. And there's the shot pulling away from their general Leonidas, played by Gerald Butler, yeah. and all of them lying down on the floor. It looks like a painting, but like a beautiful Renaissance painting. It's yeah. gorgeously composed. It's beautiful. Although I, I kind of felt weird with, with Leonidas with his arms like, you know, in a cross, kind of looked like Jesus Christ in the middle there. That that felt weird to me. Like, it looked good, but it, I, I, I was wondering, is there some symbolism I'm not getting here? This is weird. Uh, to some <laughs> degree, you know, when somebody sort of spreads their arms it always looks like the jesus thing and yeah. i i've i've sort of decided consciously to stop associating okay. it always with christianity because it's like people can like just spread their arms you know what i mean yeah, like maybe he was trying to fly i don't know i don't know but he sacrificed himself for the salvation of his people yeah. so i i was thinking are they trying to do something like that here it's it's kind of weird but yeah i don't know yeah, and I get where you're coming from, because yeah. that is usually how that thing is being portrayed. I don't know if that was the case here or not. Yeah. I choose to just ignore that stuff, <laughs> unless I have something else confirming Christianity, just because I'm tired of associating people spreading their arms with Jesus. Okay, you know? yeah, that makes sense. What I find interesting, and you mentioned the visual style, I agree with you. The whole movie was filmed on a soundstage in Montreal, a small one at that. Really? Yeah, Uh and it is fascinating just how much they've achieved with a very small budget and just digital effects all around. 
there are there's these beautiful shots that are tracking for like a minute or two a single shot where the characters are moving around and they're real people so it's not like star wars episode three where you have this big sweeping space battle at the beginning you're like oh it's all one shot yeah but it's computer generated so kudos yeah. for the conception but <laughs> yeah in terms of pulling it off big deal <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, but this one, you have, there's real people, so the camera has to move them around. And when you see the size of the actual soundstage, it's so small, it means that the actors must have had to run around themselves a little bit, and the camera having to follow them in circles a little bit to pull that off. And wow. it is kind of fascinating how he pulled that off. That's cool. And since we're talking about the comparison to Star Wars, you know, like Star Wars, it was filmed on a soundstage, but unlike Star Wars, the acting is actually really good, I find. Yes. Yeah. I No, there's no problem with the acting even you know there was a kid at one point dying even i, I normally hate child actors but even there is like well he, he did his job perfectly it was fine i liked mm -hmm. it you know acting very very good yeah alina uh, hetty who plays uh, leonidas's uh, wife queen gordos yeah uh who gets involved in a political plot that's not in the comic book uh, by Frank Miller, uh, Zack Snyder added that stuff, and thankfully, you know, because it was a little bit heavy on the sausage. <laughs> but we'll get about the movie being unintentionally gay a little bit later. Yeah, uh, but yeah, or intentionally. I'm not entirely sure, actually, because you know the Spartans they d were encouraged to yeah. sleep with one another to become uh, more caring about their fellow warriors. So. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just saying. <laughs> um, but. Her storyline I liked a lot, actually, because, you know, it does feature a strong woman. It does, you know, when you think about it coming from Zack Snyder, who gave us Sucker Punch, the most ill-conceived, what-were-you-thinking sort of feminist <laughs> movie. Because like, yeah. he claims it's a feminist movie. And I yeah. sat through Sucker Punch going like, how? How? Yeah, <laughs> wow. And I'm, I'm, giving, <laughs> I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, going like, maybe he just did not manage to convey what he meant to convey properly and that's where he felt and that he doesn't actually think that little girls dancing hypnotically in scantily clad action heroes anime stuff is actually a feminist statement i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt yeah where he was probably meaning to criticize that and it didn't come across yeah probably uh <laughs> But when and I give him the benefit of that because of this movie. When you see what he added to Frank Miller's Sausage Fest, this very strong female character, yeah, who at one point gets used and abused sexually, but sort of moves beyond that and makes a clear statement that women are, have much more to offer in that society than that. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting uh, subplot. I liked it a lot. Yeah, and it, like you said, it was a nice change of pace. You know, going back, eventually you're tired of you know all the fighting and all you know half-naked men fighting elephants and you're like okay you know enough's enough let's 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 look at something else and oh you go to sparta completely nice set completely different point of view and you have her which is you know a, a good interesting strong female character at a time where you did not have strong females mm. so it makes it and you know it's not like did, it, he didn't change it so that all of a sudden ancient greek is all accepting a female and she's revered by everybody no she still faces the same you know why are you talking to me? You're a female. No, but she still is managed to be very strong in that setting, which is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't have like the random like token female Spartan in the amongst the three hundred. Like that would have been awful. Oh my god, that would have been so bad. <laughs> um, um, Gerard Butler, who plays Leonidas, I thought was excellent in that movie. Yeah. Uh, granted, his role mostly involves him shouting very dramatic things over and over again. But damn it, he does it well. Yeah, he's a good shouter. <laughs> I enjoy, you know, good, good pipes there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the nonsense that he says, but he sells it. Because, like, these are Frank Miller lines, and it's, like, uber macho nonsense. The glory of dying, we're men. Like, at one point, he even says, like, uh, oh, those people in Athens, those uh, lover of boys. And you're yeah. like... You're a Spartan, like you <laughs> slept with your with your warrior mate like two minutes ago. Like, who are you kidding? <laughs> but it's not he's not a boy; he's a man. Yeah, so is. he has a difference. <laughs> <laughs> but Leonidas, uh, well, Gerard Butler, I'm sorry, sells it all. Like it all works coming yeah. out of his mouth. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole crew, that, you know, the the three hundred that were all fighting. You all believe that you know they were really you know warriors fighting. It was you know hopeless, but still you know they're gonna do it because. They're there to fight because they're men, and you bought you bought them from each and every one of them. David Dunham, who plays uh, the narrator, yeah, uh, he he also has like this great sort of like almost Shakespearean tone of voice. I about know. Him. 
I mean, it was, you know, and especially when he talks normally, you know, and when he's in, not the narrator, but when he's just in, in normal, normal scenes like that, he doesn't have that voice at all. So, you know, <laughs> they kind of combine it together at the end when he's telling the story. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, it's him. Good, fine. But, you know, you don't, you don't realize that. I guess he's using his solemn voice to tell the story and his warrior voice to fight. <laughs> uh, in terms of the acting, my only problem is maybe I'm not a, as big a fan as a what is his name Alonzo as a Xerxes yeah uh, okay they made that guy up like crazy like the amount of makeup on like oh the amount God. of bling on that guy yeah yes it um he did not look human <laughs> <laughs> which I think is the point we'll get to that in a few seconds because there's a lot of stuff that don't look human in that yeah, movie yeah right uh, I do like the crazy deep voice. I think that's probably altered. Yeah. Yes. No. There's no no human has a voice like that. Honestly. <laughs> I know. Wow. Christian Bill has tried and he didn't even <laughs> succeed. <laughs> yeah, but his his voice is is non-human, but not ridiculous. Is what we're saying. It's, it's true. not like Bale. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get into the craziness because as much as it's based on true events, there's no way. A lot of that stuff would have happened in real life. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you list them because I know you reacted more strongly to them. Well, I'll start with the Spartans to begin with. Mm. The big advantage of Sparta is that they had like tremendous weapon and armor. And that's how they were able to, to fight back the Persians because the Persians were coming at them with wicker armor and wicker shields that their metal spears were just going straight through. And that's how they were able to hold over superior numbers. Mm. In this movie, they're bare-chested for some reason. <laughs> it's like, it's not the best of protection. And you can see a bunch of them being cut, you know, with like glancing wounds that could have totally been avoided with like even wearing a shirt. Mm. Uh, and then you, they're finding ninjas for some reason, you know, because the Persians are ninjas. They're, they're wearing the mask and, and dressed in black. I sort of go, anything that's based on a Frank Miller book has got to have ninjas or dinosaurs or both in okay. it. I am so tired of Frank Miller and his ninjas. Nice. I didn't know that. <laughs> and the Persians use like rhinos and elephants, which is like, no, that's, you know, that, that, those are like Hannibal's thing. You know, don't, don't give those to Persians, you know, <laughs> it's... Really weird use of animals that was not available at the time. Can you imagine them bringing them on a boat to Greece as yeah. well? Like, it's so preposterous. <laughs> and, you know, elephants were a great weapon when they're using very large number. Three of them, that's not enough to make a difference against an army, really. <laughs> you know, they're going to be secured with spears and arrows. They're going to die. There's no point in having three elephants in your army. It's completely pointless. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's like he's, he's throwing all these bags of tricks, you know. All, all of a sudden... It, the Persians have gunpowder as well at one point. Yeah, they threw grenades. That's they what, that was my grenades. favorite part. It's like, and one, and one point when they botches the throw, so he, he explodes all the other piles of grenades. It's it's like, wow. <laughs> In <laughs> fairness, the um, the narrator describes it as their magic. Yes, their magic. <laughs> but, you know, magic or not, gunpowder is like 14th century in China kind of thing. You know? <laughs> Maybe a little earlier because of fires, but if you're using weapons, it's, it's, I think it's mostly 14th century, so. As weapons, yeah, no, because yeah. it was very late that it was used as a weapon. Yeah. So, yeah, the, those magics there is like, of course, and they're being thrown by ninjas as well because they have the masks, because it's like, wow. And I mean, like, this is what kills me though. Beneath the masks, like, we, at one point, like, they tear off the, the ninja uh, veil there. Yeah. And it's like, it's a mutant under it, and it's like, <laughs> the, oh, the Persians are mutants now? Like, yeah. what's going on? I mean, why have the mask? If you're a mutant like that, it's so much scarier to your enemies to be fighting something that doesn't look human hmm. and some, some guy in a Halloween costume, you know? <laughs> so don't wear the mask. It has more of an effect. <laughs> oh, no, it, the mutants in general. Like, at one point, there's, like, this big, big yeah. guy at one point, And then later on, there's a dude with uh, saws for hands. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy with a goat head at some point. What was the deal with that? It's crazy. Yeah. It's totally crazy. Yeah, I think you're on Mars. I all of a sudden, like, total recall. You know, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and yet, I will argue that it all makes perfect sense. Oh, really? Yes. How so? <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, David Dunham yeah. is telling the story to an army to pump them up and telling them of Leonidas' sacrifice. Okay. He is buttering up that story like crazy, as you would if you were trying to pump up an army to fight a much larger army yeah. to sort of pump them up. Like So he is like 
telling all kinds of bullshit throughout his entire story. And I think that's sort of the point of the movie. Like in the comic book, none of that. It's like it's a, a, an objective narrator, which makes no sense. And there is that crazy ninja stuff. But it's Frank Miller. Let's all ignore him. Okay, okay. <laughs> but what Zack Snyder did, I think, is sort of make it about a tale about how propaganda works, about how war stories work, how legends serve a purpose and and how it's used okay because if you look at it carefully there, there there's interesting symbolism from the point of view of this guy trying to propagate anti-persian propaganda okay because first of all there's all kinds of scenes in the movie where like you weren't there for that how the hell would you know that's a good point and all of those scenes are the craziest ones when the traitor shows up yeah. at xerxes little tent there that's when you see the guy with the goat head. That's when you can see the guy with the sauce with the hands. All the mutants come out. Okay. And that's the part where the narrator has no way of knowing. He just made that crap up to make the the enemy sound like uh, like demons. That makes sense. Um, the, the, the traitor. Yeah. He's also all deformed and misshapen. And the, yeah. uh, that's also deliberate where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that traitor. Yeah, yeah. Like, he he, he looks stupid. He, he, he has big ears and his mother dresses him funny. Like, it's just, yeah, you yeah. know... <laughs> Um, so, but did he also narrate the part about where Leonidas went to see the Oracle and the, the Oracle told them not to, you know, not to attack? Because the council knows what the Oracle looks like. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but he's telling it to the army, not to the council. Okay. So, All right. So, and, and he's denigrating politicians like crazy in his story because he's going like, we're the army, we're the ones that matter, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, he is narrating that part too. And that part like is completely batshit crazy. Yeah. Although that is kind of how the Oracle worked, you know, in uh, Adelph, I think. They inhaled smoke from a, a, an underground source. I don't know what, this, what the smoke was. And, you know, then people just went crazy because you're not supposed to inhale that kind of stuff. And they just bothered random stuff. Mm. And that's how the Oracle, you know, started in Greece. So I was like, okay, they, they kind of got that right. Um, well, interesting detail about it. Uh, yeah, it's, again, p from the point of view that he's telling the story. Yeah. You know, these are the oracles said, like, don't go to war, right? Yeah. And now they're going to war. So he wants to discredit them as he's telling the story. Yeah. So, of course, they're leprous and, and, and they're abusing these young women and they're, and they, they're bought off, you know? Yeah. Which he has no way of knowing again. But he's like, oh, yeah, these guys, yeah, yeah, they, they have warts and they're stupid and they got bought off anyway. And you don't want to listen to them. Leonidas is bare chested and, and, and has coconut oil on him. You want to listen to him. Basically, what you're telling me is, I just saw a movie where basically it was all a dream. It was all <laughs> a story. Yeah. Now I'm liking the movie less because you basically made me waste my time. <laughs> Do you feel that way? Because I feel it's actually a more interesting statement about I guess. legends. Because, I mean, none of what he says is completely untrue. Yeah. Leonidas really did go there and yeah. get killed. To be fair... Um, I didn't like the story for the movie for the story, more for the looks. So yeah, it doesn't really ruin it for me. It's just that you know, I don't, I don't like when people lie to me in movies. <laughs> <laughs> He's not lying. He's exaggerating. Yeah. Okay. Because sure. what happened did happen. Yeah. And it's not like the movie starts off going and and like switch and baits and goes like and that was all the story. You know from the beginning that he's telling a story to an army because that's the first shot. Okay. It's not like a third act reversal at la, a la M Night Shyamalan. Okay. It's more of the idea of like, okay, we're presenting a story with an unreliable narrator. And as the movie progresses, the narrator gets a little bit excited about his story, I guess, and becomes more and more unreliable. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he does. Which, and again, you know, like the Leonidas' story about the wolf, like, unless Leonidas told him that story there's no way he wasn't there to see it but you'll notice that his strategy against the wolf is exactly the same as his strategy against the spartans yeah so they're they're oh, you mean against the persians oh yeah against the, the knight is just turns on his army at some point oh, yeah. Like, yeah, fluff, fluff, fluff. oh i am sparta no uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's and I think that's a in more interesting statement than seeing a bunch of like completely insane crap and going like, yeah, that was history. No, 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 no. Okay. Side Snyder's going like, yeah, no, that's not history. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. That's a legend. Yes. Where did he make up the elephants though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a couple of things where it's like, okay, he, okay, well, he's exaggerating and he's making up crap, but my God, like, how did he guess that these things exist? Like, yeah. how did he guess that grenades would one day exist? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is the thing, maybe, maybe you know, maybe the greens and the elephants happened, which makes the Persians like the weirdest strategist in war ever. 
um, you know, let's let's mix and match a bunch of strategies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not not stick to one that works. But um, yeah, okay, I can I can see him, you know, especially for the deformed parts and the goat man. Yeah, I can see him, you know, okay, they're they're evil, they're deformed, they're not Spartans like us. I can totally get that. It makes sense. Did not see it that way at all. I just thought, you know, it's like, okay, this is just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. Like, when yeah. you're watching, you're like, what the hell? But really, it's this final shot where he's like, yeah, wah, wah, and like, all the, he's pumping up the army and whatnot. And you remember, oh, yeah, yeah, he was telling that to the army all this time. You're like, oh, yeah, like yeah. that little snake there. How long did that army sit there in front of the other camp of the other army just listening to a guy tell a story? <laughs> and the other, the other army's not attacking. It's like, yeah, <laughs> there's these guys over there. I guess the the guy in front is probably telling a story. Let's just wait until he's done. <laughs> they're listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, hey, did you hear what this guy said about us? Like, that son of a gun. We don't have a goat, man. What is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's it's a good time to sort of uh, get your final verdict on this. Well, like, what do you feel about this? I, I, I liked watching it. It was very stylish. I would not rewatch it. You know, I've seen it once. It, it it looks good. Uh, maybe in like if I get really you know nostalgic about it, maybe in a couple of years I'll rewatch it again. But it's not a movie I would like watch often. I was like, wow, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, I, I saw the style, I enjoyed it, and that's about it for me. Mm. If you're looking to look, watch something different that looks different, it totally go for it. Don't watch it for a story. <laughs> well, there there really isn't none, none really. It's like it's one yeah. battle. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, I agree with you. I, I think in terms of style, in terms of craftsmanship, it is a fascinating movie to see. It certainly cemented at the time Zack Snyder as a uh, as a director to look out for. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think overall, he's usually maintained a pretty good average with like <laughs> one catastrophic flop and you know and yeah. ups and downs in his career. But overall. He's a good visual director, and here he gets to do what he does best. It's probably one of his stronger movies, I would say. Okay. <clears throat> and I also like the way that he took Frank Miller's story and sort of added a little bit of depth in it. Like, I like that he added the Lena Headey story, uh, you know, yeah. a little bit of vagina in there. And uh, Sure, you know, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of penis. And... Um, I like the the sort of twist on the idea of the unreliable narrator. Yeah. And the statement it says about how our legends work, how legends are built, and how they're, they're probably a lot of times tools for propaganda. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I think it is a really artistic movie, and certainly something that is worth your time once. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not for amateurs of action or whatnot. It's, yeah, that's that's not what this movie's aiming for. And to be honest, it's part of why I respect it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, all right. Which is why it's a little bit odd to me when they announced a sequel to it because I was like, really? Like that seemed like a perfectly well structured one off. Yeah. That I don't care to revisit. Again, particularly. Yeah, I mean, they're going to do it in a different style or in the same style. I don't want it to be in the same style. I already saw 300s. I don't need to, to have the same visuals thrown at me again. Something that's been thrown around is the idea of the Battle of Salamis. Yeah. Uh, which was a naval battle, I believe. Yes, yes, it was. And so, at least, if they're doing that, at least we're getting into a different setting. So it won't be exactly the same thing. Because, I mean, a naval battle will have different dynamics. Yeah. So that could be something interesting. I have to say, as far as sequels go, the idea of just taking another famous battle in that great war is like, oh, fair enough. Like, cause it, I was like, what are you going to do with 300? Like 301, you know? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> another 300. You know? the, the queen goes to war this time as well. She's a strong female <laughs> character. <laughs> She's the one. <laughs> There's so many possibilities to screw that up. Just like... At inception. Yeah. But taking another battle, I think, okay, well, that's a fair tact. I, I, um, kudos on that. You found a way to make a perfunctory sequel that doesn't feel like a complete insult to history. Yeah. Why call it 300? It's not 300, though. <laughs> uh, marketing wise, you need to. I guess. You know. But I don't know. It's, I think they have to copy the style because that's what people will remember of 300 if they yeah. do it in a different style. Or certainly, if they do it in a more realistic style, it's going to be epic fail because that's not what the franchise would be about. Yeah, that's a good point. It's weird. 
It's I don't know where they're gonna go for that. I mean, how do they not f with the original? You know, first of all, they need to if they're doing a lot of fighting scenes. There's just nothing I didn't mention. They need to film them the same way they did here. No shaky cam, no uber close up. You know, it was one thing pretty you know pretty enjoyable to watch actually action happening and see what was going on. It was ridiculous action, but at least I could see what was happening. It was just not all shaky and you know. Well, what just happened here? You know, you could even when there was a giant melee full of people, you could see it very well. So they need to keep with that and not go to with you know the shaky can thing that that's happening so often, and that would just make it so horrible, especially with that style of you know visuals. No, I agree, and also I, I don't know. It's just the idea of the sequel makes me scared that they might have not interpreted a three hundred the way I think it works best okay. and might have interpreted it as an action franchise. Oh God. And yeah, and the tendency will be to put you in the middle of the war by doing the shaky cam thing. And I'm like, A, no, don't do no. that. B, I don't want to be in the middle of the war. No, I, I like looking from afar, you know, I'm, I'm not a Spartan. Yeah, I'm kind of wimpy here. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be in there. I'm looking at the big guys fight. It's all good. Yeah, and especially a, a, a battle that's so long ago and that you want to view from more of a historical point and more of that fascination. Like, I can understand how Saving Private Ryan, you want to use Shaky Cam to sort of give you a feel of how horrid yeah. war was. Like, yeah, you want to see how visceral and how uh, how awful and terrible and horrifying it must have been to be there. But I personally don't want to know that, but I understand how that's an artistic statement in itself, a, yeah. an interesting one to make. But for something that happened so long ago, like why? Are you going to have the narrator again just talking and making exaggerated story again in case there's an other war later on that, you know... Oh, that's, that would suck. That's weird, you know. Yeah. All of a sudden, the, 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 uh, their, their dragon's attacking or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. I take it back. That might be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird choice to, to you know get that franchise back up did, did the original 300 make that much money oh yeah it was a great success oh, keep in mind it was a very low budget movie okay which is what amazes me about it like when you look at it it looks rich it looks expensive it looks very yeah craft well crafted yeah like it, it didn't cost a lot of money i guess it's also because the style you, did, you didn't mind that the backgrounds were fake because it, it, it blended everything bring together as opposed to look at star wars that's you know the, the, the prequels where yeah. you could see real characters like they look perfectly normal humans mm. go and fade into like terrible faded like one dimensional backgrounds or two dimensional I guess background and it looks terrible whereas this you know since it's all stylized everything was coherent together so you know to be fair you know it, it looks good and uh, you know maybe if they manage to do that again you know and do something like even more even crazier I might just give it a shot you know oh, that's interesting I, I'm I, for me it's a catch-22 Either you pull off the same stunt successfully, and I'm like, well, I've seen it before. Yeah. Or you f you change it up or fail to capture the magic, and then you fail. And then I'm like, haha, you failed. Yeah. It's sort of like, it's the, they're doomed if they do, they're doomed if they don't. I think just the idea of the project is a really difficult one to pull off. Now, I've said that about other movies that I've ended up loving. So, you know, I could be completely wrong. We'll yeah. see. But okay. I don't have high hopes for this one. Maybe they'll do something spectacular, but I'm afraid it's going to be more of the same, which mm. is pretty much, you know, sequel like this. You know, more of the same, you know, change a few things here and there, add new characters, and, well, they need to add new characters because everybody's dead, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they return from the dead. That's what it has yes. to be. On the Persian side, you know, that's why you need a bigger army. <laughs> In modern times. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> nice. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, you want to share with us your love of 300 or any individual one amongst those 300, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can write us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. And until then, this is Sparta! He didn't need to spit on me, dude. Uh, historical facts rela relating to 
that battle because uh, in in real life Leonidas actually lucked out a lot in this one uh, in 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 real life because okay. um, a lot of the ships from the Persians actually crashed before they got there and <laughs> actually probably spared quite a bit of their lives. Yeah, and, and that like is that. in the movie as well. Oh, that's you know? true, it is. Yeah. So, you know, pretty cool. What did you think of the movie? Um, it looked great. That I can say. It's a style I've never seen before, and I like that. You know, I'm always looking for something different. So looking at the style of the movie, it was very spectacular to look at. As an action or suspense or a great movie, eh, really, uh, it was it was mindless fighting really <laughs> most most of it for me but so yeah it didn't do it for me but it was very beautiful to look at I will give it that no I agree um it, it is kind of one note which is uh, and it's a relentless note by by the end you forgot the first rule of remakes Jill don't fuck with the original hey everyone. 300, Rise of an Empire is coming up, and you know what that means? This is Sparta! Wow. No? Okay. <laughs> Actually, it means it's another edition of Don't F with the Original. With Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. We will be discussing the movie that started it all, in this case, Zack Snyder's 300. It's funny you say started it all, because it's only the second movie. It's like it started it all. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. It's two movies, but it's 600 Spartans, you know? <laughs> with, with, with his arms, like, you know, in a cross, kind of looked like Jesus Christ in the middle there. That, that felt weird to me. Like, it looked good, but it, I, I, I was wondering, is there some symbolism I'm not getting here? This is weird. Uh, to some degree, you know, when somebody sort of spreads their arms, it always looks like the Jesus thing. And yeah. I, I've, I've sort of decided consciously to stop associating okay. it always with Christianity because it's like people can like just spread their arms. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe he was trying to fly. I don't know. I don't know, but he sacrificed himself for the salvation of his people. Yeah. So I, I, I was thinking, are they trying to do something like that here? It's, it's kind of weird, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I get where you're coming from, because yeah. that is usually how that thing is being portrayed. I don't know if that was the case here or not. Yeah. I choose to just ignore that stuff <laughs> unless I have something else confirming Christianity, just because I'm tired of associating people spreading their arms with Jesus. Okay, you know? yeah. That makes sense. What I find interesting, and you mentioned the visual style, I agree with you. Of the, the runtime, you're sort of like, I, I sort of want to see something else at this point. Yeah. So I totally get where you're coming from. I don't think it's really an action thriller. I, at least, well, <laughs> yeah. obviously, there's fighting all the time, so there is yeah. action. But yeah. I, I don't think it's structured that way. I don't no. think it's meant to be taken that way. I know. It's just, it, it's for crazy visuals that you would yeah. watch this movie. I got the point, he's, eat, he's eating an apple, and it looks great, okay? So <laughs> it's not all about the fighting, really. It, it's really... About the visuals. Absolutely. Well, the shot where... Look, spoiler alert, people. This is history. If you don't know this, then I blame you, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, all the Spartans die. Um, well, not all the Spartans, but all the Spartans that stay there The 300. Yeah. yeah. And there's the shot pulling away from their general, Leonidas, played by Gerald Butler. Yeah. And all of them lying down on the floor. It looks like a painting, but like a beautiful Renaissance painting. It's yeah. gorgeously composed. It's Beautiful. Although I, I kind of felt weird. <laughs> so, 2007, Zack Snyder, 300, based on the comic book by Frank Miller, also called 300. What a coincidence. Crazy. Yeah. Take it away, Nick. The Persians are attacking us by Xerxes, and Leonidas wants to protect, you know, his city and his country, so he goes, he wants to, you know, attack them, but the council or the oracle doesn't want them to commit the whole army, so he goes to defend Greece with 300 people and the whole concept is them fighting uh, the Persian army with only 300 soldiers. Yeah, which is based on, of course, uh, true history. Not quite exactly, but... Um, well, yeah, well, actually, it's based on history. I wouldn't say true history. <laughs> His whole army went there yeah. and when uh, events in the movie unfolded, only 300 stayed back, yeah. basically. So it, it's close to what happened. Yeah, and we'll get into some of the inaccuracies and some of the interesting uh, 